Hey everyone, Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com. Welcome back to our live broadcast that we're doing quite a bit. We're working on expanding this into new concepts and ideas in the coming weeks. We'll talk about that when the reality actually sets in. We have a special guest for this hour's podcast, Aaron Bates. Aaron, what is going on? Eddie, working on airplanes. That's what's going on. So Aaron uh, works closely with 3D Hobby Shop and now with Extreme Flight RC. A lot mm -hmm. of the graphics, I'm going to click on your head so that you pop up there, Aaron. So a lot of the graphics that you see on the planes, and you design as well, right? Well, I am a, I'm an art director for Extreme Flight, and I am a brand manager for Aces High, and I am also working on air, uh, aircraft development. Yep. I've known Aaron a long time. Aaron, you, uh, you used to be a review for us at RC Groups, correct? Yep, I've been around. How long ago do you think that was, like seven uh, years 2004, ago? 2004, 12 years I've been on acid groups. And uh, the, the first time I really looked at you and thought, this guy's got it going on, is uh, <laughs> you walked up and you had a hat on like mine, except on the top was a camera, and then what dropped down from the – I'm going to click on my picture now. I, I don't really yeah, need yeah. to tell everyone what I'm doing, unless there you're listening you to us on the, on the podcast. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I have a hat that has a little bud on it that I mount cameras on, but you not only had a camera up here on the bill of your hat, you had a sighting system for yep, one of your reticle. eyes. Yep. Yes. Actually, one of my projects is to make a brand new version of that. But. And that allows Whoa. you to look at the airplane in the air and film it while the camera's on your hat. Yeah, it helps it be repeatable. So the, the best videos, you're actually zoomed in a little bit if you put your GoPro or something like that. The, the angle's too wide. So you need a camera which you can zoom in a little bit, and then if you zoom in, you need to be able to aim it. So if you have a crosshair system, then um, you can get used to aiming it, and then it just becomes a repeatable process. Awesome. Wow. Maybe I don't need a helper then for reviews. Maybe I can just wear <laughs> this thing no, on well, my head. Yeah. Uh, all of my flying videos, literally all of them, um, they, were, they were shot from my hat cam. So how about a hat cam that talks to the monocle eyepiece? And then that would allow you to zoom in and out, you know, right. and get your shots. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's a little much. Maybe you would need, well, like, a foot rocker. Well, what's entirely possible is you could put a receiver up there and it have an extra channel, and then you could can control it via a channel. Dang, now we're talking. And so you started out. Uh, how did you start out? How did you start flying RC? Uh, I was six years old when Dad finally pointed up for an RC plane. Um, and then I've just been flying ever since. That's pretty much the long shot of it. I've tried most of it, um, but I first came onto RC Groups because I had a brand new design called the Twinkle, which was the first little park pond 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 flyer, am amphibious. I don't remember uh, that. the Twinkle. Well, it people would now call it a Polaris, but it actually came before the Polaris. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and it uh, because the Twinkle existed, it uh, it it proved that the Polaris was possible. So that's when Jet Set went off and made the Polaris. Polaris is a more manly name, isn't it? The Twinkle. <laughs> well, we're talking about fun little airplanes, and if, and if, oh, you, yeah. can't, and if you can't celebrate what is uh, flippant and fun, then, then, then what's wrong with us? Right, right. <laughs> so, Aaron, do you, do you ever start feeling like you're an old school guy because uh, people that fly now don't remember when there were no foam airplanes and you literally had to go buy foam and cut it and all that, and, you know, we it was invented um, online? Yes and no. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly intrigued by all the people that come up with um, some brand new thing, which is actually an old thing that's actually been around for literally decades. Um, but mostly I'm excited that, that people are in the hobby at all. So if everybody's got a smile at the flight line, then then that then that's what I'm after. So. Awesome. And so you you started out that way, and then you started doing reviews, and you were pretty mm -hmm. prolific on the site. And then how did that make the jump to 3D Hobby Shop and young, good-looking Ben Fisher? And then yeah. Ow. So uh, on the side, so I've I'm a I'm a graphic designer by education, but it's not my day job. So so on the side, I've usually helped out companies, um, and if the older guys remember companies like uh, Bolly Products, I've actually helped out Bolly Products um, for you know bad stories. But um, uh, 3 3D Hobby Shop looked like they could use some help with graphics and stuff, so I just they extended 
they extended an offer and then just started working with uh, the various schemes, helping them out with color schemes and then helping them out with the website and then things just grow from there. So. I think Ben Fisher started out as Blue Core Basher because he was a Blue Core Basher. Yep, that's still his handle. And I remember uh, the first printed foam airplane was made by Mike Glass, who took a printer and he said he cut it to make it wide enough to accept foam pieces. And he started mm -hmm. printing through that. And then it kind of just took off. Yep. All right. Um, so I don't know if there was a question in there for me. But. No, no. So <laughs> if I just uh, randomly say what's on my mind. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. Yep. Ben was building uh, blue core planes, and uh, then he started 3D Hobby Shop to focus on um, on 3D planes. But what's actually funny about that is is I remember the very thread that Ben started saying, I'm going to start this new business concept, and I remember thinking that that's not going to work out at all. But, <laughs> oh. And so uh, as our guests start showing up, if you're a guest, you can click the Q&A button in the upper right-hand corner and ask Aaron any questions that you might have. So, Aaron, as you started uh, moving out of foam and into larger-scale 3D planes, tell me about the trick, too. And I have hand-cut many trim uh, film covering schemes in my day, but uh, how do you create a kick-ass uh, scheme and then make it so a factory in China can do it over and over again? Uh, happily, most of the talent of, of that process is in China. Um, so I just come up with the graphics in a way that, that they can scale the parts and then print out the parts and then actually all of those all of those traditional scheme uh, schemes are actually applied and hand cut. They're not knife cut, they're not cut on a cut on a vinyl cutter, they're hand cut. So if you look at the in insanity like the 126 inch slick scheme which I did a while back and it's crazy lightning bolts and everything, all those pieces are hand cut. And all I can do is just just apologize to them, really. So it's that really a, a work of art. Yeah. That was one of the things go. I hated doing was hand cutting graphics. You know, when we had the yeah. when we were doing pro bro stuff, everybody put pro bro on the bottom of the you know the, the flat wings and stuff, and yep. it was a pain in the butt to cut those letters out by hand. Yep. The 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 craziest thing that I've done was my Australian flag scheme. I've, I've made a bet with someone that I could recover my 87-inch extra in that scheme within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if it wasn't for just like a half a stab and one of the rudders, it, it, um, I almost pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I ever cut was, uh, it was the material that you put in the bottom of a drawer. And I put oh, Billy yeah. Hale. Yeah, I made Billy Hell for the bottom of my first airplane out of shelf paper. It lasted. It's still in the garage. So shelf paper, a yeah. number one. Yep. The hardest yeah. thing about the the covering process is when you double it up and then you get the bubbles. And if you use monocoat, you you can use the Windex trick. But with right. ultra coat, you you don't get to use the Windex trick. And then the real Windex trick I found was just to spray it, lay it, and let it dry on its own. Make sure your your air's out of there, but don't touch that it. That is that is the Windex trick. Yep, but that doesn't work on Ultra. Right, which I found out. And so uh, some of the coolest stuff you do these days is the amazing three dimensional. I don't know if three dimensional is the right term, but it's basically you build it in Photoshop and then they print it onto the film that then lays on top of the bird. Is that where we're at with it now? Yeah, that's pretty much it, except it's all Illustrator, so everything can scale without getting brass rastering effects. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's literally the most complex graphics that I've ever worked on, and that includes when I was a professional graphic designer. And but, so um, is the plane yeah, behind you a so good example of that? That's my favorite example of that. That's, can you bring um, it forward? I can do better over this. I can change the camera. Whoa. Hey, do you think Ben is out there watching coming. right now? There we go. So then we get full airplane. Oh, no, we don't have a camera yet. We yeah. lost your camera. It's all black, buddy. It's all black? Oh, yeah. Black. Let's try that. There it goes. There we go. There we go. So, yeah. So that's the, the full bird and all the scale details. Oh, yeah, look at that. Which is all down to the rivets, the shading... It's got weathering on it. I'm mostly proud that this plane comes dirty out of the box. Right. 
I, I had to teach him how to dirty up this. Uh, where am I? The camera's backwards. I had to te teach him how to dirty up the cowling. So it literally comes out of the paint shop, brand brand new, and then it goes goes over to one of the stations, and then he literally dirties it all up and makes it look <laughs> all grimy. It's That's very awesome. Hectic. That's the way it should be. It is the way it should be. But uh, was that hard for that guy to fathom? It's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what this is crazy. Yeah, no, it was a really funny, funny thing to do. There is video of it somewhere. I just change the camera back. There is video of it somewhere, but um. So you actually go to China and hang out with these guys that and girls that build these airplanes, right? Yep. So the the last trip that I was on was um. Uh, end of last year, and then we went over, and I specifically had to teach him how to do the weathering, so that um, because you end up with a brand new looking cow with a brand new looking canopy sitting on a dirty airplane, and ah. not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about China. Like the first time you went and walked out of the airport, or your first real China experience, uh, was it a mind blowing thing? Uh, not particularly, because I've done. Other international trips, like um, I've had uh, uh, for my day job, I uh, have 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 had teams in India, so I've had to go to similar cultures over in India. So it wasn't mind blowing in that respect, but what is mind blowing is just their work ethic and 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 how driven people are to make a good product. I have seen your videos of the factories, and they always look very clean and like a great place to, if you had to put an airplane together, that would be the place to do it. It is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The problem I run into is that after the Chinese New Year, a lot of those people never come back. They leave, um, and they never wind up back in the factory, and then you have to retrain them. Here we go with one of those cats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, kitty. Yeah. The... <laughs> Uh, well, most of our people come back, so I I I can't specifically talk to that problem. So. Right. And so you do this on the side. What is your main gig? I am a software developer for enterprise software, you know, dot com companies. You work out of your house there? Yes, I do. With your cats. Now, when you were in China, were you a gigantic person compared to everyone else? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, yeah, the three of us were a little large. Okay. <laughs> and do people like are they used to seeing Americans now so it's no big deal that uh, you're walking down the street or do people kind of give you a second look uh, people in the factory aren't, aren't too much bothered by it but uh, people outside can be yep few, uh, a few glances every now and, now and then the, the, the funniest thing about the size difference though is the, at one of the factories there was their take on a western toilet which was literally a a, a small fold-up chair which had arms on it, and th they literally <laughs> just took a hole out of the seat and just set it over their pit. And, oh, nice! Except and um, yeah. for for all three of us, it's like we we have to like jump a little bit to like squeeze down between the arms. <laughs> <laughs> Was this well, like that, a that's clock? better than my experience. I just had a hole and I had to pop a squat, oh, you know, and yeah. that was tough, dude. Now, yeah, did, was this in your room or on the street? Where was your hole at? Oh no, that was in the factory. That, in the that, that was in an yeah, actual in toilet area. But most of the hotels uh, are pretty westernized, depending on where you stay. Yeah. But you can get really, you know, pretty nice western style hotels. My only complaint about the hotels is the beds are rock hard. Yeah, they were a billiard True. table softer than that. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I got a bad back, so I probably could uh, use a nice hard bed. Yeah. So, so tell us about the uh, the Super Honey Badger. Isn't that the name of it? The Super Honey Badger? She's actually just around the corner. I could go get shots of it if you want. Uh, you know, it don't care. It don't care? Okay. Honey Badger. <laughs> honey badger yeah, go, don't. Get it. go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'll go get it. Honey Badger don't care. Yeah. Mm, All right. We need some like okay. music for this. Okay. If I had this camera, I'd take you to the toilet and show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I have here. Yeah, uh, there's a recreated experience. She's she's getting ready for the season. Oh, we got no video. There it is. All right. So for those oh, of you yeah. that haven't seen the Super Honey Badger, you've got your uh, collective pitch tail rotor right there on it. I remember wow. when it. When it unfortunately, unfortunately went down at uh, 
uh, Flight Fest, but it looks like is this a uh, n- number two or is this this repaired version? Uh, no, Flight Fest was um, just took uh, one of the elevator balances off. She was oh, okay. perfectly fine. Good, good, good. I guess that's what happens when you go down in the bean field. It's like going down on a yeah. downy soft pillow yeah, of no, toilet since, paper. No, since then we've actually done a, a flight test episode specifically on the Honey Badger. So. I love that plane. It is uh, quite unique when... Now, it, it's... Remind me again. It's belt-driven um, electric and you can turn it on uh, on and off? It uses the torque tube. It's the power. It's the tail power system out of the uh, T-Rex 700. Yeah. Okay. So but you fly what without I'm doing now is I'm going to... Uh, my put a larger tail rotor motor on it, put larger packs on it, because I need to start experimenting more, because when I first built it, I was a little bit ginger with it. I was a little bit, I don't want to break it, but yeah. now that it's been around a little bit, it's like, okay, let's see what it does before I break it. Man, I love how you molded the back end of the fuselage there. Um, it almost looks like a, sort of like a bobber motorcycle. It's very, uh, util- it just looks cool, man. It looks it, it looks you. rough neck in a good way. Yep. Looks good. It's Maybe a fun airplane. A fun airplane. Like car style. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, show, us, show us your shot. <laughs> uh, this is actually just the side porch, so I'm totally annoying my wife by getting all the planes okay. ready for this. Oh, I see a freaking DLG. That's Easy. What talking You're talking Jason's language now. What's that thing with a hat on it? Oh, my That's, God. It's it, Cousin It. <laughs> it's, exactly. It's Cousin It from Halloween. Yes. And then we got a little foot, and then we got a 52. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 57 inch extra. <laughs> the cats uh, love to hide in the cousin it. And I'm sure at first know. they were flipped out. Man, Prototype. you should remote control that thing and take it places. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would yeah. be amusing. Yep. Nah, I'm taking over the house at the moment because it's like, I have to get these things done, honey. Uh, I'm sure your wife loves it. Yeah, and then we got the duster in there. Yes. Nice. Oh, it's everywhere. Nice. Man, you're real. Oh, yeah. Well, Aaron, we did get a listener question, and it was, how did you get your name spelled with two R's? Uh, Dad thought he was funny. (laughs) Um, So my father's take on it is that... My camera's dead again. No, we got you. No, now we lost you. (laughs) Moonshot. There we go. So Dad thought that um, at the time people pronounced it Aaron as opposed to Aaron. Mm-hmm. So his reasoning was that if you spelt it like arrow and then changed the W to an N, that, that got the name he wanted. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately it, it just means that I have to tell everybody twice as to how to spell it. So you, you grew up in South Carolina? Is that what I <laughs> Yes. Now, where are you Very, from, actually? Uh, Sydney, Australia. Ah, okay. Makes sense. All makes sense now, doesn't it? Yeah, everything's coming full circle. I find that some of our Australian users are intense. They are quite the intense batch of dudes. Is that just uh, how Australia is? Everyone's really full on all the time. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah. Um, Everyone's their own character. So. Do you own a boomerang? <laughs> yeah. uh, now we're getting into stereotypes. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> no, the difference is is not only owning the boomerang, but knowing how to throw it. There you go. Yeah. I but my advice ones. to everybody, and this will be a joke to anybody that owns a boomerang, is you want to throw it on its side and very hard. Anybody that has a boomerang, get the joke. Could we make an RC boomerang? How cool would that be? Mm. There is like a, a, DLG, a military boomerang? UAV boomerang that just rotates and mm-hmm. goes on all the time. But what they do is they they time the the camera frame so that every time the boomerang comes around, it ah. then takes the photo. I've heard of so that. So they can pan, and it's and it's just flipping, and it's and it's just changing the state as to when it gets the photo. That is cool. You got to be joking! I want to see some video of that. I've heard of of something similar to that, but I think I don't know. It I dismissed it, <laughs> but apparently yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. Or something. So wow. Aaron, are you going to Joan all this year? Oh, I would love to go to go to Journal. Oh, we'll be there. Sweet. I also want to go to Seth, but that's a little bit more. Up in you. Well, we're definitely going to Seth, and uh, I we're waited. We're thinking to... about Joan, all right? Isn't it on the list? Like maybe <laughs> us? Yeah, us, right? I don't. So know. maybe. No, no. I waited so long to get the hotel room. 
First time I've what ever. Did, what did the lady call you? Sugar drawers? <laughs> honey pie. Sweet honey pie. Yes. Honey pie. We don't yes. have any room left for that. Honey pie, you better be joking. And That's I called an RV place and got us a dang old 30 foot, seven person RV. He called you honey pie too, didn't he? <laughs> well, I know that guy. <laughs> I know what uh, you're waiting for, Matt Gunn. What? Honey pie. <laughs> we have the honey. Oh, yeah, we have the pies. <laughs> we're going radio show over here, Aaron. It's uh, <laughs> soon we're going to have really crazy new uh, effects and wind. It's soon. Soon. <laughs> yep. Man, oh, man. So you camp in... Wait, are you can't you are, so if you go to Joe Nall, are you RVing it or are you camping or, or I know you're not camping in a camp uh, a tent, right? But are you hotel or RV? What are you doing? I usually just rock up and just see where a bed is. But that's so, exactly how everyone should live their life. Yeah, <laughs> just show up and uh, say, "Where am I sleeping?" That's where called homeless. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so far, it's been in various RVs. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. I can't wait. I, I think we're gonna end up um, either we're on be either we're on the 3D line or we're down between the FPV and the main line. I don't. We're not gonna be on the 3D line because we'll never get out uh, yeah, bandwidth right. wise. So we've got to be by the lake or up on the top. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know actually where we'll be this time because we got all these fun new toys. So yeah, I'm not no, sure this is where like 3D cool stuff, here. right? Yeah, uh, not anymore. More it's, more um, classic line kind of airplanes. I'm yeah. sure you could hand uh, you could hand that uh, Aces High back there to Colton and he'll 3D it. No, I think that <laughs> I think that even this one's beyond Colton. But, yeah, yeah. Now this one's more more about the turning into burning. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty awesome. But but what's fun is it um, is it we're really good at the era. Uh, uh, is that we're really good at the aerobatic planes, but it turns out that we're pretty freaking awesome with the other stuff too. So who designs your scale Warbird stuff? Who's who's putting that design on? Um, collaborative effort. Um, there was a product that started out of a few people. Um, I ended up coming in late in the process to make it more scale because we were just about to put it out, and it, it was it was just at the start of the the merger. And we were just about to put it out, and we're like, well, we have this new printing technology, and we, and, and we can make it a lot more scale. So I'm like, this isn't very scale yet, so we got to change some stuff. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure most of you do, Extreme Flight RC, Chris Henson joined forces with 3D Hobby Shop Ben Fisher. And I got a call from Chris, and uh, Jason and I drove down to the new facility and took photos and hung out with the guys. And then they made the big announcement a week later at Joe Nall last year. And so it's been a year. And so, uh, Aaron, is everything basically out now and available for purchase on the site? Uh, coming along. Uh, some of the projects, like like the Warbird, were um, took a lot longer due to just uh, a high degree of complexity. Re you now have a plane with retracts, stuff like that, and we had to sort out the scheme and the weathering and and everything else. So the so the Aces High Line's taking a little bit longer than than we wanted to come out, but it's but it's coming along. I'm also working on this uh, Playmate, so the second plane in the Aces High bird, um, second plane in the Aces High won't won't be too much longer than than the Buck Wolf itself. And will there be some new planes to show off at Nall this year? Uh, Joe Nall, um, I'm sure there will be because we're just working on so much stuff. I'm sure there's going to be something. I I know that we have a new toy for Seth. Ah. Um, yep. And with all the legacy airplanes, um, there's there's lots of fun airplanes to fly. That oh, that that duster is just so good. I think I read that that uh, at least Chris is going to Seth this year. Ah uh, yeah, Seth. Um, that'll be at least Chris and Ben. Ben will be there. Chris right. will be there. Sure I love so hanging out with Ben year. at Seth. Yes, there's a lot of good stories of Ben at Seth. Well, usually what you want to do is get there after dark, and if a golf cart. Usually it's my golf cart, so if my golf cart shows up, you want to get on it. And uh, the last time we did this, we went on off-road excursions. Somebody else was driving, and Ben and I had I'm, the golf cart would go somewhere, stop, then we would all get off the golf cart and talk. And this went on for what seemed to be hours. No, that's a Joe Nall, no one. <laughs> now, this particular time was at Seth, but uh, Joe Nall is a whole nother deal that I can't talk on. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. What do you think the chances are we'll have some of the FAA guys in the cart with us at Seth? <laughs> It'd only be good for drunk. them. Oh my god. How do you think that would go? <laughs> well, when they we, see we golf cart flying. You remember old uh, Mark Murdoch, Pecan Patch, and if, if FAA sees some nighttime golf cart flying with shenanigans, uh, I have a feeling that either they would their jaws will drop or they'll just leave right there because they're like, this is out of control. That's the most fun I've ever had. Just getting on the back. You ever done that? Have you tried that yet? Did you earn your golf cart wings, Aaron? Oh, I've earned the golf cart wings. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've been to Journal a few times now, and um, yep, you can't avoid it. Can't avoid nope. it. <laughs> I kind of reined it in at Journal, you know. Uh, uh, we used to get wild, but uh, Seth is still—you can still get out there. Uh, Jason and Ashley and I were in a golf cart at Seth, and uh, Mark Murdoch was waving us onto the airfield in the middle of the night. And I said, "What the heck are we doing, Murdoch?" And he said, "What did he say?" Jason? Hey, he said, dude. Hey, I don't dude. remember what he said, but it was just like, what did they call it? Um, uh, What was the name? Oh, <laughs> Rolling Thunder. He goes, hey, dude, it's Rolling Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Hey, <laughs> That's dude, it's Rolling Thunder, man. And That's totally Mark. <laughs> and, then, and then out of nowhere, fireworks. Pew, 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 pew. Cars, <laughs> airplanes. That's coming from everywhere. It was... Spectacular. And, and Chris DeGraff going, Woo! <laughs> it's a good time. Oh, my God. <laughs> you sound like you were there, Aaron. So, Aaron? I've been to a few of them, but there's a statute of limitations on most of the information. It's true. It's true. That's, uh, having an RV puts us in harm's way because what it means is there's no going home and you're there. And uh, when you're there, you're there. Yeah, if it's a good way to put it. If you ever get the chance to stay at the airstrip at a fly-in, it's just so much better than than going to a hotel by far. Ah, oh, here, here. Is, is it kind of like when you get it, you got it? I was gonna say yeah. that's yeah, <laughs> very much. It's like, like even when I went to Seth back in 2008 or whatever, it was stayed in a tent and there was like four of us in the tent, and it's, it's a crazy good time. The only problem with staying at an event like that, which I forgot about until just now after getting the RV, is some yahoo, you go to bed late usually, and then some yahoo decides burning down the field at 5 a.m. is cool, and then I never can go to sleep after that. Yeah. Uh, hey, I think, the and, and then Joe Knoll's version of it, which is people ripping props at 5 in the morning. Yep. Right. Wow. Wow. I remember Jim telling me, I, I don't know why this always, when I think about going to an event now, I think of Jim, your story, where you accidentally parked your RV too near to the next door neighbor's uh, um, field with the, the uh, I'll, irrigation I'll system? I'll tell it. So every time I went to Seth, even at 9 o'clock, you know, me and Chris would be playing guitars or something, and there would be some guy who wants to go to bed at 8 uh, p.m. Turn it down! Why y'all be so loud? You know, so every time I kept moving farther and farther away. So finally... I, there's that peanut field. Now it's a 3D line, but back then it was a peanut field. I moved my RV all the way to the peanut field, and I thought no one is going to get onto me here. And so, and no one did. But at about three in the morning, what I didn't take into consideration was there was a huge irrigation watering system that you know was on wheels, uh, and I guess the water propels it through the field. And it taken it all night to propel to my trailer. And at the end of the water thing is a fire. Looks like a fire hose hydrant. Sticking out the end to get a little extra thirty feet, you know, off the off the water thing, and so it just slowly crept around the field and then got right in front of my trailer, and it's like a cannon, boom, boom, boom. So water's coming through the window, cannon fire to the side, the RV's shaking. I'd fall you go, out of the top. Dad, damn it, consort it! I almost break my leg falling out of the top bunk. I blast out the back door, and then the water is coming over that thing and raining down on top of me. It was startling, to say the least. <laughs> I had to wait, too. I had to wait like five minutes as it boosh, boosh down the side of my RV, and I thought, well, if it doesn't dent it, at least it'll wash it a little bit. You can't make this stuff up. It's not a good event, so you get an awesome story like that out of it. <laughs> you get accosted by an irrigation system. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. 
There's I went down in that field. I went down in that field. I showed up there. I was flying FPV. I know we're not supposed to talk FPV. I was flying FPV, and I threw my plane out. It's nighttime. I'd always flown at nighttime in Atlanta, where it was nice, and nighttime was actually daytime for a nighttime camera, right? It's because everything's so bright there. Well, I get out to Mac Hodge's place, throw the plane in the air. It's pitch black. I cannot see a single thing. I'm under the hood, and I just augered that Skywalker straight into that bean field, and I just said, forget it. I'll go get it tomorrow. <laughs> it was it was buried. Just mm -hmm. yeah, that bean field's taken quite a number of planes. Actually, one thing which is going to be different about this year, Seth, is that uh, Servo, the dog, is no longer oh, with us. Yeah. For those of y'all out there, I knew Servo. Matt, you knew Servo. Jason, mm -hmm. did you actually know Servo? I've known two Servos. Oh, wow. And that buddy that used to work at Hobby Lobby had a dog named Servo as well. I talked about and thought about doing a story about Servo, but it's kind of tricky doing stories about sad stuff. And yeah. I, I didn't have a lot of Servo <laughs> photos to use either. But we we thought about it. Plus, every time I lose a dog, it breaks my heart so much I can't really talk about it. So I just I love that dirty old mutt and bless his bless his little heart. He was <laughs> he would sh show up. He'd greet you when you pulled in. Then he'd come and you you get out of your car and he s just stick his whole body up on you. <laughs> and you're like, all right, you know. And I mean, I come from having a German Shepherd that we my wife would want me to wash every single week. So we had the spotless dog that I'm used to, and then there's Servo, who was rolling around like a pig in the mud, and you're like, man, that is one dirty dog. But what a great creature, you know. <laughs> yep. Well, I used to feel so terrible about my dogs dying. I've got to, I have a new philosophy on it now, and that is, especially my last two dogs are rescue dogs, and uh, they both dropped off on the side of the road, and one lived in a stump next to a river in Houston. And so I figure, even if they died tomorrow, the uh, I, the amount of love and comfort and good times that they've had more than makes up. So I'll try. I'm going to try not to feel so terrible about it when these dogs pass away. But. There you go. Yep, they could never. Now cats, on the other hand. No. You don't know Jack. I got a I got a cat named Jack Black, and he's my buddy, man. He runs had, I grew up. I had a I had an animal. I had a pet cemetery at my house growing up. That's how many animals we had. I mean, hamsters and rats and dogs and cats and guinea pigs. Everything you can imagine. I remember at one point I was burying one of them and accidentally dug up another one. So, oh, wow. There you go. Talk about, when you tell people that, they're like, uh, yeah, next story, please. But it was just part of life. It was where I lived, lived on some land and had a pet cemetery. There you go. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so That's how's awesome. airplanes doing, y'all? <laughs> so Aaron, what have we not t uh, touched on that we need to touch on? Oh, I don't know about need to touch on this. There's, there's always things to talk about. Uh, airplanes, airplanes that are coming. Make a twin. Make a military twin. Speaking of complexity, as we were talking military about earlier. Military twin. I wouldn't mind a military twin. I there want a military twin in the works. Like a Chinook uh, or something? What are you talking about? A like Chinook. A, <laughs> a Chinook. Like an F7F Tiger Cat and OV10 Bronco, like I have hanging right here, which would be Tiger awesome. Cat. Tiger, Tiger Cat. Tiger Cat. My language. Yep. Yeah, Bubba. That's what I like. Yep. Yep. But All right, no, so there we go. We'll, we'll hold you to it. Works. <laughs> Can't say that live. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good info. Thanks. Now, there's a ton of things in the works, um, even on the aerobatic pleads. Um, also, this week I've been working on something that I've been working on actually for a couple of years as a aerobatic plane. Um, it's it's one of those things where um, for aerobatic planes in particular, it's hard to find a new subject. But um, <coughs> there are some planes that uh, basically come out without telling anybody, which is pretty interesting. Um, but I've been working on... Um, a, a plane which is from a university in Brazil. It's an aerobatic plane, um, but it was designed around having not too much money. So, you know, people that can't afford your, your extra LX or whatever. Um, so it's a relatively small aeroplane. It's pretty cool. It's, it's called the CEA 309 Mahari. So I'll end up with one of those eventually. I don't know if it'll be for Journal this year, but... Definitely next year. And I'll just throw up a. Oh, cool, man! I'm looking, I just Ooh. looked at that. That is an awesome-looking airplane. Oh no, let me let me get. Put that I back up. That. I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna what, what me? 
No, I got it. Man, look at that's that. that's kick. Look at yeah. that color scheme, nice. dude. It's not too shabby. Um, there's there's only one of them in existence. There's a second one being built, but I'm in talks with the guy that owns it, and I've been talking with the actual designer of the airplane. Um, and I might get to design the scheme on the second full size on the second full size one. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, speaking of full scale, you know Tim Burt flies the extra 330LX. We can forgive him, yeah. And we've been uh, he could just got his trim scheme. Redone. So we're yep. looking for stickers. I don't know if you guys have sent a sticker to stick on the plane yet, but we would love to have an Extreme Flight 3D Hobby. You need a sticker? Thing. We yeah. can send you a sticker. Is there a size limitation? We don't limitation? want a sticker. We mean a decal. Well, we there is, big... because we got one in the other day that was, like, gigantic. So we're looking for, like, 6 by 6 type of deal. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you a small one then. <laughs> Something to put, put under the cockpit. Ready Made RC sent a one so big that I got a phone call about it. <laughs> it was like this sticker's awesome, but it's gonna make all the other ones look tiny. So that's funny. No, the new airplanes are cool. Um, one of the cool things about the Mahari too is that I actually got the the full scale CAD to 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 reference. Um, so the designer happily gave me that. So it's gonna be probably one of the most scale full full scale aerobats there are. So that'll be fun. And there's another thing in the works which. Um, we're, we're pondering making called the ARS 300. Ooh, that looks familiar. Yeah, so well, it, it looks kind of like a slick, a, a kind of like a slick that made it with a with a cap. Um, That's that big cap tail on it. Yeah, I think yeah. they mate in the air like a hawk. I'll put it back up so you can do the presentation bit. There you go. There you go. Um, I did it. The um. But it's from a company in France called uh, Aircraft Restoration Services. It's a it's a company that's done so many restorations that they thought that they should make a full scale plane, make their own plane for one. Ah, right. Which is pretty interesting. But IRS three hundred is a uh, it's a pretty sexy airplane, really. Did so, you say the IRS? ARS AR. Aircraft Restoration Services is what. IRS three hundred has quite a ring to it. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It's sexy. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I don't know if it's flown in aerobatic competition yet, so I don't know if it's IMAC legal, quote unquote. But um, it's a pretty sexy airplane. So, and I know that Top Model have a composite IRS 300 coming out of the Czech Republic. So, so maybe we'll we'll be the second one to market with that. So, but IRS is a pretty sexy airplane. So we'll see what we see what happens with it. Lots of good stuff. All right, Aaron, we have another question for you. What? Says, I'm not seeing these questions. Is the Bushmaster back in stock, and do you have a recommended power setup for it? Uh, oh, the good. Bushmaster. So I am unsure about the stock because I haven't uh, had, I haven't been in that side of the business for a while. Um, but the recommended power setup is definitely the the torque motor with the 6S 3 3000 power setup. It's it's pretty awesome. You know, I have yet to get my hands on one of those. By the way. I think I need some stick time. <laughs> the top motor, the 6S3000 or the Bushmaster? Uh, Bush. Bushmaster. Uh, the Bushmaster, yes. Uh, it's a really cool airplane, and we're glad that it's sold out. So. Yeah, it looks awesome. I can't wait to, to get my hands on one to fly. All right, here's what time it is. You should, you should try one of those, because it's like a Bushmaster, but low wing. Really? It's yeah. Pretty nice. Fantastic. Uh, here's a question. The first person to answer this, and however you're talking to Jason, because I'm not seeing this. Uh, what interesting thing was in Aaron's garage that uh, I said should be uh, turned into RC? The first person to answer that correctly gets a oh, no. fifty fifty dollar plus account. Oh, oh! Can I get a plus account? Jeez! <laughs> I just want fifty dollars. Do you not have a plus account, Aaron? I do not have a plus account. You uh, were actually going to put me on the RC Group's team. Give me that team badge at one point, but that never happened either. That, that was a long time ago. <laughs> you know what? I was the you know, the, there is no RC Group's team now, but I was looking for my RC Group's team hat, which I know is in the basement to wear on this podcast, and I can't find it. So, Jason, let's make sure we get Aaron a plus account, and if anyone answers that question correctly, give them a plus account. And then you I know what? They end up usually firing on the uh, YouTube page as it goes down. Aaron, Aaron, what's your username again? Uh, the KM. There's a question. Uh, I thought it was Aaron Red Baron. 
Oh, uh, we got a guy here. We got a. Oh. Why is can you see him now, Jim? Yeah, I can see him now. I don't know why I couldn't. Also, if you're listening, uh, this is a self-promotion thing happening right now. If you're listening, in the coming hour, we're going to have the guys from ReadyMade RC, and they're going to talk about Dubai and all the insanity that ensued at the uh, Grand Prix of... Yeah. You know, I've got a couple yes, of I'm new curious trucks. as to how many people uh, are going to give up fixed fix win contests because the first prize is 250 grand. <laughs> There's another one coming up in Hawaii that's a $200,000 first prize. Yep. Okay, so we have a winner, and it's Carlin Blue. And go ahead and shoot a PM to us if you would. That way we'll know. Ex well, no, that won't work, will it? Um, uh, I think only we can see it. If you can post your RC Group's username in the Q&A part so I can see it, then I can take care of it. I like before we get off the channel here. All right, Aaron, so when are you going to shave your beard? That's a good question. I actually did for Halloween. So to go along with the cousin It, I, my wife asked me to dress up as Morticia. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez, I don't know if we need to see any more of that. What no. did she dress up as? <laughs> she was dressed as Gomez. Grizzly Adams. <clears throat> I got to say, Gomez is pretty suave, dude. Gomez <laughs> is Didn't awesome. He? He's millionaire. He sword fights. He's got a pencil mustache. A nice uh, accent. Yep. Even those 1980s movies are just so good. So good. Yep. My daughter. I grew up on that show uh, in black and white, and then when my daughter was old enough, she started watching the old ones too. Yep. Jason, do we have our info on our user? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Because we're about he's, to jump out of here. He's signing up for an account right now. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you guys uh, taking to journal? Obviously oh, not a Turbo Bushmaster. So I'm no. Last not year stuff. Matt Matt brought everything. Yeah. But, uh, he's not every, doing that this year. I don't know. I'm gonna bring one big plane, and it's probably gonna be my uh, my Pilatus, my Red Bull Pilatus. I, I might bring that. So. I'm probably gonna bring one race quad just in case, and this little wing that I'm working on for the FPV course. Nice, nice. Jason, I mean, you're just gonna bring some DLGs and some. I'm FPVs. gonna bring a snipe. I'll bring some quads for the FPV course. My paragliders, for sure. I never got oh, my paragliders. If you by guys the way. just 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 stop by us, we'll uh, give you some buddy box time on on some real airplanes if you want. Nice. Yeah. Well, I want to fly the Beaver for damn sure. Ah, uh, they're all fun. They're crazy good. Like that Turbo Bushmaster. You won't believe that an airplane that's like that has like zero coupling knife edge. Like yeah, I don't believe. Knife edge. Look at the dihedral. Just, it really doesn't, huh? It's just ridiculous. Like that photos of it from Journal last year, it just knife edging like a foot off the deck. It's just so easy. Tell me uh, about what about the little foot? How does she fly? The little foot, little foot flies great. It's just a small high wing. It does a does. Does a bunch of the 3D stuff. Um, Does it alpha around pretty good, or do you get a little bit of extra wing rock when it's getting down squirrely, or how does she fly? I just was curious about that. I want one. So if you guys want to send me one. The, uh, there's a slight different trick if you want to play around with the high alpha because your throttle becomes your elevator and, mm -hmm. and vice versa because you have your flaps down and, and so forth. And there's a couple of, uh, of little tricks to, to, to set up as to how you crow your your ailerons to make it a little bit more steady, but it's pretty awesome. I love it. I never really uh, had the hangar room because I have too many big planes, and as you see, all the crap in the back. I'm pretty much too capacity. So I, I didn't have a lot of room for a big foot. I wanted a big foot, but now that I see the little foot, I'm like, well, there's my there's my answer right there. Yeah. So I'm going to probably end up purchasing uh, one. Just I was at a fun fly last year, and there was a little bit of wind, and I decided to take off rolling out of the pits, but I had four flaps and it took off backwards and I was already in the pits. So it was like, it just took off behind me. <laughs> That's some good lift. <laughs> I have a possible extreme flight update. This just in, I'm uh, requesting permission to say this live on screen. So hopefully I'll get a reply back before we jump out of here. I did, uh -oh. get, my, I did get the username, so we are good on our winner. Yes, this is big news that I'm about to announce. At least, I, you know, for me, it's big news. Uh, I'm okay. asking Chris 
Chris said yes, but I'm going to ask permission before I say it live. Uh, okay. What are you talking to Chris right now? Well, Chris just shot me an email about a thing I spoke to him about yesterday in my front yard when I had an idea while making noodles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you told me about this noodle idea. Yeah, see, it's ringing bells now. A lot of descriptors take you right to what I'm talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, I'm going to – hey, uh, let's let's get towards the end here. I'm going to call Chris up and be right back and, and get verification we can announce this. Okay. Oh, man. Can we just have like a three-minute long drum roll? <laughs> How about just complete <laughs> silence and everyone? <laughs> so, it's how sweet. are you? <laughs> I'm good. Oh, oh man. man. Where do you where do you live? Where are you right now, Aaron? Where do you Me? live? I'm in uh, West Decatur, Pennsylvania, which is right in the middle. Okay. Basically. All right. I'm over in Cleveland. So yep. Near State College. State College is the biggest town most people can get oh, yeah. Hey, we're heading over to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Pittsburgh? Yep. You're not going to go to the, o to the Ohio Indoor? No, because my wife planned uh, us Something a little vacation else. time. Something else is right. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going, to, we're going to downtown for the weekend, and uh, I don't know, just taking my three-year-old son. We're going to just uh, go up the side of the mountain and do family stuff. So, no, I'm not going to Neff, right, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. Yeah. I, I go every single year. I've reported on it every year. I'm I can't believe I'm actually missing it. Um, it's only Friday and Saturday night, right? I think it's three days, but yeah. Well, maybe I can do Sunday then. I don't know. We'll don't see. Know any... Here he is, folks. We'll see. What's the word? What's the All word? All right, I just, I just went out to the pool and talked to Chris, who answered the phone. So the big news is this year, 2016 at Joe Nall, Extreme Flight is the event coverage sponsor for FlyingGiants.com. Boom. Where's the applause, Jason? I, well, I don't have it queued up. I'll just do it uh, Queue one. up the applause. <laughs> Fly. Do it later. So this is the first time that Extreme Flight has uh, done this, and that means that uh, the coverage coming out of Nall and going out to FG users will be... Sponsored by our friends, like I just said it. Oh, we've lost him. Did we just lose him? He's dead, Jim. He's gone. Uh, let me let me just make sure he knows he's not he's lost here. Oh, he's gone. All right, I just let him know. Lost you over on his other. Uh... His line just went down. So if he's in control of the feed, are we even online now? Yeah, we're still live. I don't know, maybe. We are still yeah. live. There's five people watching. We'll have a little Maybe ocarina. Like... Now. <laughs> what is this? That's Jurassic Park. That's what I <laughs> are, you really are you really blowing across? I was the really thing? playing that. Yeah, I used to know the song pretty well. He's back. I'm what back. happened? Hello. We lost you. We had a little Jurassic Park ocarina music going on while we waited. <laughs> so before we get out of here... And get set up for the next one. Um, Aaron, is there any final words you want to say to new pilots, old pilots, anything you just need to tell everyone in the world? Just get out there and enjoy yourself. Fixed wing's better than multi rotor, but you know. Oh. Hey, I'm moving back to fixed wing on my FPV. I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. what's actually interesting is when the FPV is is that the FPV racing guys are figuring out that the wings are faster, so there's now starting to be wing races. So. I have to say they are faster, and it does feel more intense. Like it feels it more Top Gun like. And it's with very a, with an much more fun to watch. And I think when I crash my little thirty-inch wing, I'm not going to have to worry about snapping as many things. You know, it's EPP and the props in the back. And we need to F We we need to get the FPV into one of these. Yeah, like in a war room, would be awesome. Well, I say that, and then I have gone quad crazy. Dude, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I want to thank Aaron from like Extreme Flight 3D Earth. Hobby Shop for taking time out and hanging out with us today. I want to thank all of you who've uh, watched live. And then, of course, this is about to go out to YouTube for the many other users who want to watch it. And it'll also be a part of our iTunes podcast coming out later in the month. So, Aaron, thanks so much. Sure. And I guess we'll see My you. My pleasure. All right.
All right, guys, okay. I'll see you back here in about six. Woo. Oh, All see right. you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Adios. See you. All right.